Hi, I'm Diana from Key to Music, and this is a video to help you with playing songs live and learning them to perform in standard. So, the challenge is when you want to bring a song to performance standard and play it confidently, perhaps adding in some singing. Um, there's a few different things when you're trying to learn a song that you need to take into account and, and get around. So one of the challenges is getting lost. Where are you in the chord progression or the song? Um, another challenge is how do you know if you're playing the same thing as either everybody else who you're playing with or as the recording? How do you kind of pick out what you're supposed to be playing and hear, whether it's the right thing or not? Um, sometimes it, you can get confused as to whether everyone else is on the same bit as you or whether the song or the recording is on the same bit as you. And sometimes you know where you're supposed to be, but you physically just can't get there in time with your hands and the chords and the part that you want to play. So we're going to tackle each of those problems individually. And we have a few example songs that we, we're going to look at. So for the first one, getting lost, um, the thing that helps the most with that is having a very clear idea of what the structure of the song is. So if you know that the song goes, um, in a, the chords go in a certain order and you have that order memorised, even if you get confused, you can stop and wait for that section to come back in again at the top of the sequence. So for songs that only have one chord progression that goes round and around, um, it's fairly easy to sort of solve that just by waiting until a sequence has come to the end. Once you've counted it through a few times, you start getting a pretty good sense of when we're at the end. There's a kind of feeling musically, the, sense, the sort of the phrase that we've finished and are starting again. And usually that coincides with the beginning of new sections like choruses that are reasonably easy to identify once you've listened through to the song a few times and you know what you're listening for. So in terms of not being able to hear what's going on and whether what you're playing is the same, if you're listening to a whole band recording with bass, drums, vocals, guitars, other instruments like pianos or violins or banjos, there can be a lot going on and it can be quite hard to hear and the part that you're playing might not be matched by exactly anyone in the band. You might be playing the part that goes with it but that isn't identical. And it takes a little bit of time to get used to picking out whether the sound that you're playing isn't fit with what you're hearing. So the solution to that is to play the same chord sequence but to a set of chords that don't have all those other instruments. And I'm going to provide you with that for some of the examples that we're going to look at. So if you get used to, for example, if you're just hearing a chord and a drum going one, two, three, four, quickly when it's changing chords and it's a lot easier as compared with a whole band where lots of things are happening and it's, it's not quite as clear when the, ch the chord is changing. So the solution to, to not being able to hear is to take a simpler version of that song, get used to how long everything lasts and what the sequence feels like because then when you try and play along with a more complex version you'll already have that assimilated, you'll already be familiar with it and it'll be easier to match it up. The other part of that is that if you're trying to think about finding the chords and remembering what order they come in and you're trying to pay attention to what you can hear, it's a lot harder because there's three things that are happening at once. So you need to build your confidence and familiarity and ease with the first two things, which is being able to get to the chords and knowing very clearly what order the chords are coming in. And that frees up your brain, your attention span, to be able to count and stay with what's happening in the music or in the band recording. So, um, we are going to take a look at that in relation to a song called Wang Wheel. And um, that has the chords G, D, E minor, C, G, D, C, C. So, um, we're going to look at it just in the open position first and then the version that we're going to play has a cap at the second fret, so we'll, we'll do that as well. So when you really clearly understand what the structure is, you, know, you can probably get to a point where you can remember the order of those chords quite easily. You'll, you'll, you won't have to play around it a million billion times before you just get it in your head that it's G, D, E minor, C, G, D, C, C. And that's the entire song. Each verse 
goes around those chords twice, each chorus goes around those chords twice. So, um, and they last for four beats each. So, let's say that you want to play this song, um, but you are having trouble hearing when to change chords and getting to the chords at the right time. So first of all, you want to practice each pair of chords by itself, and you want to be able to do let's say 22 in a minute, or 43 in two minutes. And you would work on that by simply working on that transition from G to D, and then from D to E minor, and then from E minor to C, and then from C to G. When you're doing that, um, you can also pay attention to making sure your thumb is behind the neck, the, the, you know, you're trying to get the strings to ring cleanly. And that will help you remember all of the chord shapes and build your dexterity. If you're still struggling to play the six string chord shapes, you can of course play the three string ones. Um, it's also possible to, when you're playing with an ensemble, to leave out a chord. So you could just play the first chord, move it, let's miss out the second chord, play the third chord, miss out the fourth chord, and go back to the first chord. And then you have plenty of time. So there's always ways you can peel it back.